Outlaw Sports is brought to you by Casper Energy Services. Casper Energy Services prides itself on a culture of success. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Jamie Crysdale, one of my favorite players from years gone by, one of the all-time greats, a former center with the Calgary Stampeders. And, Jamie, today's a sad, sad day. I wanted to get your opinion, being a former player, about the CFL saying no season. The government said no money. They had no choice but to call it off. What are your thoughts? Uh, it's You know, it's terrible, Mike. Um, I do remember back, and this was before I got into the CFL, when... The CFL had to be bailed out because of just financial trouble and guys came up and stepped up to the plate and I couldn't imagine even back then the feeling that you would have being, you know, not knowing if you're going to have a job. So it's uh, got to be a scary time for a lot of the guys that uh, were getting ready to play this season and, you know, hoping to get a paycheck and now you get left with what do I do? It's uh, terrible. So what do you think happened? What do you think, where do you think the CFL went wrong on their approach or uh, just overall view? I mean, you're sitting back there now, you're a fan of the game, Jamie. You used to be a player. Yeah. Well, you know, it's tough because uh, the CFL has always been a league that's driven off of ticket sales. And when you don't have that and you don't have a TV contract, you're kind of reliant on the ability to sell tickets. And... You know, the CFL has done a tremendous job, uh, even since I've been involved with respect to just, you know, promoting the league, promoting guys, you know, building up guys and developing characters that people can relate to and that they want to, you know, kids want to grow up and be like whoever, right? Like a Dave Dickinson kind of guy, right? And um, so, you know, it's just tough. I mean, how do you sit in the stands and watch a game as a, and I call them bleacher creatures, Mike, because it's always guys that sit back and go, you should have done this, you should have done that. And it's like, hey man, here are the keys in the phone, you go do it. Well, no, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. (laughs) So is there a right thing to do? No, I mean, you would hope that everybody involved is doing everything they can do for the right reasons and to get the league going. And, you know, I don't know if there was concessions that the players had to make to keep the league going. I mean, there's obviously things that they talked about doing, cutting and doing everything they can do to get the league going. And I don't know, it's tough. I mean, it's just, it's very unfortunate because it is a league that seems to have always, seems to always be walking on eggshells, right? Because it's such a give and take with uh, with the, the amount of money they bring in versus what they pay and what you can pay. And it's, uh, well, this is definitely going to make the league figure out how do they have, what's the path forward? You know, what is the path forward? I mean, this is the worst case scenario. It's just happened. I mean, what do you do next? Well, let me ask you this. We've seen SOS here in the mid eighties. We've seen the Montreal uh, Alouettes fold, leave, go to Baltimore, come back, become a mini dynasty. We've seen tough times in Saskatchewan. We've seen tough times in Toronto and BC. Can this league survive this? Oh, that's a great question. And, you know, I mean, do they go to the fans? Because that's what they did in the 80s, right? Right. The fans are the ones that came up with the cash. So, you know, do you try and get some big money guys to throw cash at the league? Because it's a Canadian tradition. And is that enough to make the league survive? God, you'd hope so. But... It's going to take somebody with some deep to- deep pockets or somebody with some pretty creative ideas for them to come up with a plan on how to move forward, right? And I remember hearing Ambrosi talk about uh, maybe Europe and all this other stuff. That's fine and dandy, but how do you generate income in Canada when you're playing in Europe as well, right? So I don't know. I mean, they got to come up with something. Seemed like uh, I love thinking outside the box. I made a career of it, but... That was beyond the box and beyond. I mean, uh, you know, let's let's get the best product out there. And I know, and I know I'm going to piss you off with this statement, <laughs> but I, I mean, even the Canadian racial, do you change that or what do you do? I mean, you want, I want to see the best talent out there at all costs. And, and uh, I, I can't see Ambrosi um, surviving this really jamie and but you need somebody that's going to come in uh with a new fresh new attitude and 
And you might have to go back to the, the, the grassroots and reestablish everything. Yeah, well, you know what, Mike? Um, no, I don't hate you for making that comment because I'm on the same path you are because I was fortunate enough to play my ball in the U.S., right? So I didn't come out of you at Canadian University and there's such a, and I don't want to say it the wrong way, and I don't know if there's a right way of saying it, but there's, a, there's sure a disadvantage that guys who are Canadian that go to the U.S. and get exposed to the U.S. systems have when they come back to Canada. And... I mean, God love it. I mean, that that's pushing the game forward, right? And, you know, I understand that the game is Canadian and, you know, you want the best talent on the field, but you're not always getting the best talent when you have to deal with the ratio, right? Because there's just not so, there's not a ton of Canadians that have gone to the U.S. and played college football and come out, come back. And because everybody wants to play in the NFL, right? They want the cash and it's all about the, the hoopla and everything else. And, the thing that I've noticed and the thing that I love is the fact that people can't brush off the CFL anymore. It's not a Bush league, right? They always used to talk about that because I'd loved it when the guys from the U.S. had come up and, oh, he's from the University of Miami and this and that and the next thing. The guy sucked, right? And <laughs> just like, really? Like, yeah, it's just, it's the, and it's just such a different game. And, you know, I love the fact that I'm Canadian. I love the fact that I played in the CFL and it's, um, I know they'll come up with something, but you know, is Ambrosia the guy? I don't know. You need somebody, like you said, who thinks outside the box, who is creative, can do the marketing and get the league back where it needs to be. Larry Smith, I thought, did a great job. Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't, I, I played during that time, but you know, obviously it was a good time. So yeah, I had nothing bad to say about him. Yeah. You know, I mean, the league, uh, I mean, we've seen so many versions. I mean, and it seemed to be uh, even back in the day when when you were playing and they had that uh, CFL expansion down to the States, not very well thought of, uh, thought out. You had owners like Rickman who wanted to go out there and grab some fast cash, uh, yeah. not thought of, um, you know, but they survived somehow. Baltimore beat you guys in 95 with a roster made up of Americans, uh, but you guys survived. <laughs> there should be an yeah. asterisk by that Grey Cup, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, the U.S. expansion, I think, you know, it could have been something that might have worked, but, you know, you're competing with football in the U.S., and there's so much of it down there, and is that really a place you want to compete with? And, you know, or is there a better way to expose the guy, expose people in the U.S. to the game, right, by trying to find a broadcaster that, will we'll broadcast the CFL games in the U.S., right? Like, as I think that, um, I remember back in the day, and I remember guys talking about it, how their families were able to get games. I almost want to think it was the Sunshine Network or something like that that had, that was taking the CFL games and broadcasting them in the U.S. Well, what about that, right? Yeah. People don't have to commit to anything other than sitting down in front of the TV and watching the games. I mean, what's, you know... Even the NFL strike, I think back in 82 or something like that, NBC came down here and it was kind of comical how they, their announcers did okay, but they didn't know the nuances of the league. They didn't know any of the uh, rules. Uh, they didn't know what the hell a rouge was. They didn't know what a yard off the ball was. I've always, yeah. you know, and you know, so yeah, ESPN two was carrying a lot of the games. Uh, and I, and here's a thought too. Would you, if you were commissioner, let's just say hypothetically you were, yeah. um, would you go to the NFL to ask for some kind of support as a developmental league? Well, because I, well, it's funny you said that because I always kind of thought we were. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well get money for it. Well, this is the thing. I mean, why not send guys up to the CFL? They're still, uh, they're still sharpening their skills, right? I mean, <clears throat> yeah, maybe it's not the right league for certain positions, but. I would think DBs and receivers, my God, like how could you ask for a better situation? You got a whole field to work with. That's that. exactly right. Yeah, and I mean, DNs for sure, because you got want guys with speed, and then your old linemen, that, that, that doesn't change anything, right? So linebackers, eh, I don't know, because the guys in the US are so much bigger, right? And the guys in Canada, the smaller, faster, rangier guys are what really works up here. So. Yeah, def uh, you know, definitely. Why not? Like, what's the worst thing they're going to say? No, we can't help you right now. Or, oh, maybe we should think about this, right? 
So, I, you know, you'd be you'd be remiss to think that they haven't already done that. But who knows, right? Then you know, you don't get the playbook. You don't. They don't tell you everything they're doing. But you would hope they're doing everything they can to, yeah, build connections, relationships, whatever. Well, you would think that would be the case, but you would think if someone like The Rock was going to pay $15 million for the assets of the XFL, somebody somewhere in the CFL would have had an idea that was happening and maybe say, well, before you do that, why don't you talk to us? Well, exactly, especially since you already played up here, right? I mean, exactly. <laughs> this is where you got your start, right? I mean, you got to start in Calgary, yeah. so... You know, I mean, I'm not saying the football had anything to do with where he got to, but the wrestling sure did, and that was all based around the Calgary thing, right? I don't think that he would have built the relationship he did with the Hearts without having been here playing football. So I get it. I agree with you completely. Yeah, great point. Well, listen, always great to have you on board. Uh, we will do some more stuff with you. You've got a great story. We're going to have that on a, a little later on in another segment. Uh, great having you, Jamie. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. Take care, buddy. <laughs> Geo's Men's in Calgary, providing Calgarians to look their best.